Hey guys, welcome to another edition of IFAC. This is Infrequently Asked Questions number seven. I'm really enjoying doing these for you guys. I love the fact that you guys give my narcissism just a little bit of an outlet so that you guys ask your questions of me. I'm able to give you my opinion like I'm some eloquent, well-versed shaman, you know, sitting aloft atop a mountain of knowledge when in fact I'm just some jackass YouTuber. But thank you anyways for asking me for my opinion. I'm happy to share it all the same. With that, first question. Hey Arnold, have you ever felt hopeless about today's modern metal? It makes me sick when I discover new bands but all of them sounds fucking the same with this over-mixed and over-polished music. So, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. That just means that you need to stop listening to that and listen to something else. You know, here's the thing. Everyone's entitled to listen to whatever they want to listen to. And the reason why that stuff exists is because there's a market for it. I mean, you know, even I'll rise up and defend it to a certain extent. I mean, yeah, I've got that shirt that I sell that says Gent is for Virgins. But here's the thing, that really is just kind of a joke. There is some gent bands that even I like too. I like some of the modern metalcore stuff. My problem is that the scene does tend to get a little bit oversaturated. So in that, you do have a good point. It seems like once we have one killer band of a particular style that is really innovative, pushing the envelope, all of a sudden, all these other bands come up that kind of sound extremely similar. Maybe not copying directly, maybe they came up at the same time, but just curiously, they all happen to get popular at the same time. It's happened with a lot of different scenes. The old new metal scene, metalcore, um, that new wave of thrash scene that came out about maybe 10 years ago or so where every fucking band sounded exactly like Death Angel. Um, and even the, the gen stuff that's popular now, I mean, it is what it is, dude. If you don't dig it, don't listen to it. There's tons of other bands out there that are coming out, brand new bands that are pushing the envelope, that are putting out new releases that maybe if you don't want something that is more of a modern sound, okay, no problem. There's tons of kick-ass bands putting out stuff that you've heard a million and one times before. Just look for those and listen to those. You know, if you want something that pushes the envelope a little bit more, there's bands like Eot and Numenorian who are doing a progressive take on the whole black gaze thing, and it sounds fucking killer. Um, there's honestly tons of stuff out there. You just got to sift through it and find the good shit. If you need help finding the good shit, what I would recommend is check out Metal Injections, the weekly injection article that comes out every week detailing their new releases that are coming out across pretty much all sorts of metal and rock genres. Um, there's also Metal Sucks does a similar list every week called Shit That Comes Out Today. Definitely check that out too and honestly just start working your way through that stuff on Spotify until you find something that you dig. You know, that's honestly how I do it, and I discover so much cool shit that way. So, I mean, if you're not happy with the stuff that you're hearing, find something else to listen to. Next question. I have an unpopular opinion and would like your thoughts on this. I prefer the slower, groovier era of Morbid Angel with Steve Tucker on bass vocals. I think Formulas, Gateways, and Heretic are great crushing albums and are on par with earlier material, but lack the prestige and historic significance, of course. However, those three albums seem to be disliked by purists for fan of David Vincent. I understand fans not liking the last two albums because they're objectively bad. However, the three aforementioned albums are brutal and deserve more praise, in my opinion. I really... I'm kind of in the same ballpark as you. I actually like Morbid Angel across the whole of their career, with the exception of uh, the missteps that you mentioned as well. That kind of reunion album they did with David Vincent, the only reason why I didn't like that was because it seemed like there was not enough of the fucking brutality in there. There was just too much of this industrial stuff that I really didn't care for at all. Not to say that you can't listen to it if you don't like it, but me, it wasn't my thing. The most recent album, 
with Steve Tucker Kingdoms. I actually really like the music that's on that record. For me, it's the production, it's the mix that is severely lacking on that. Turn the fuck down those kick drums, man. If those kick drums had been several dB lower in the mix, that would have been a much more enjoyable record. But, I mean, back to the point. Steve Tucker. So, 2018, I remember going to a fucking incredible death metal show at um, Slim's in uh, San Francisco. And it was uh, a bunch of killer bands playing uh, Origin. My buddy Paul, he was playing that show. But fucking, it was Morbid Angel headlining with the current lineup that exists right now, with the new drummer, with the new second guitar player, and with Steve Tucker back on vocals. And that was kind of a epiphany moment for me, because I really, like, I had liked Formulas, I had liked Gateways, I had liked Heretic, but I didn't really appreciate them until I saw them perform a, a Tucker only set at that show and I was fucking like okay mine was blown by how great that material really was so much so I got my hands on a set list I photographed it and I immediately made a Spotify playlist where I listened to all the songs that were on that set list and just to like refamiliarize myself with that music and it it really holds up yeah, okay, the the David Vincent era stuff, Alters, Blessed, Covenant, and my favorite album of theirs, Domination, are fucking all incredible, and they're all classics. But at the same time, that's not to say that the Tucker era stuff is bad in any way. It just means you need to sit yourself down with them and give them another listen and check them out again, because those are killer Killer records, man, like going, especially Gateways, man. Oh, Gateways is such a fucking damn near perfect record start to finish. Every song on there is pretty much killer, no filler. It's a damn shame that people don't really pay that much attention to that era, and I'm in agreement with you. People need to go back and revisit it. Would you ever consider creating a Patreon page in order to get some extra income? The funny thing is, is that I actually have a Patreon page, but it's not really set up with any sort of perks or anything like that. It's... Just kind of one of those things where, you know, I've never really been able to come up with anything that should be a perk for those people that are subscribing on my Patreon page. I don't know. I just, I don't know what to put on that page. So for that reason, like in the description, I do include um, a donation link through PayPal, but... I mean, I don't know if you guys have any ideas of stuff to put on the Patreon. I'm all ears. What do you use to record videos? So I very recently updated my setup. The camera that you guys are seeing this through right now is a Canon uh, EOS M50, I believe it's called. It's something that was in a, a content creator kit that was on sale through Canon's website. I'm really super duper happy with how it takes photos, extremely happy with the improvement in video quality. I don't need to fuck with a fisheye corrective plugin anymore in Final Cut Pro because this doesn't really have that. Um, even the lighting is fantastic. I mean, right now the only light I'm using is just the light that's in my room, but I mean, even when I've got natural light, the contrast is much better. So much better than the zoom cameras that I was using. I still have this zoom camera that I bought from Anthony Best. Um, and I do from time to time pull it out and use it. But it's really just kind of a backup camera at this point because this one is so awesome. What I will say though, and not that anyone would be, but if anyone from Canon is watching this, I would... Really, really, really like it if there was an easier way to get my files onto the fucking computer so that I could edit it. That was something that I loved the simplicity of the Zoom. I loved being able to just plug in the camera and instantly it would pop up in Final Cut Pro. Okay, cool. Let me just 
upload all those files, cool, done, all uploaded within like 10 to 15 minutes. It was super fast, painless. Whenever I've plugged in a cable into this camera, I hardly ever get all of the files. I definitely don't get the big ones. So I have to resort to using their Wi-Fi uh, settings that is on the camera so that I can upload it via a Bluetooth connection right onto the computer. It sounds like that would make things so much easier, but it does not go fast at all. It takes a freakishly slow time and half the time when I'm doing it I end up running out of battery so I have to stop right in the middle charge up the battery from the Canon and uh, kind of start all over again minus the videos that did end up getting on there and to all of you guys that are saying well dude why don't you just eject the SD card you know I could do that but I don't really want the hassle of having to remove the SD card every single time and plug it into the computer every single time. With the zoom, as kind of meh of a camera as that was, I could just plug in a cable and it was super easy. I don't understand why I have a much more expensive, better camera and I can't do that. All right, bitching over. Question for IFAC. Thoughts on the band Black Tongue? If you haven't checked them out, listen to the album Nadir. So, I have checked out Black Tongue and I've, man, I have really, really tried to get into them, especially with that last record. That last record, Nadir, was definitely my favorite out of all of them, but something is just not hitting right with me on that. And for that reason, it just doesn't really, it doesn't really do it for me. You know, I can't put my finger on it. They sound like a band that I should absolutely fucking love. The super low tuning, brutal fucking riffage. But it's just one of those things where, you know, as much as I've tried to listen to it, um, it just doesn't, doesn't happen with me. It doesn't click with me. You know, I'm sure someday it probably will. That's honestly how a lot of bands hit with me is just repeated listenings and out of nowhere like... A light bulb goes off and oh fuck you know but so far not the case with black tongue for me i apologize hey arnold what's the best advice you would give to someone who just started reviewing metal guitars and gear the best advice i would give you is don't worry about marketing don't worry about necessarily the quality of the camera footage worry about just doing what you want to do, doing what you like doing with your content. Have fun with what you're doing because ultimately, I mean, any sort of success that I've had through doing this channel, I would like to think is only because of that. It's not because of the occasional ad that I've bought that honestly hasn't fucking done anything for me. I'd like to think it's mostly a bunch of organic growth that has happened just as a result of me being bored and wanting to do something. And that's literally how this channel started. That's literally how this content comes up. I'm bored and I want to have fun doing music. And this is a way for me to have fun doing music, spout off a bunch of our opinions. And somehow you guys have found me and for the most part, you guys tend to dig it. Honestly, man, I would just say... Have fun. Enjoy what you're doing more than anything. I would almost say it doesn't even necessarily matter what you're doing so long as you enjoy it. Because if you remember what I mentioned in the last video, I don't really make any fucking money off of doing this at all. So I kind of have to enjoy it. Otherwise, what's the point? How do you feel about nine string guitars at the moment? I know you've reviewed the Schechter Damien Platinum and the Agile 10 string, but are you interested in any others? I know there isn't too many options out there at the moment. Yeah, and for that reason, I've kind of strayed away from the whole 9 string thing. I was all about it for the longest time. I mean, I'm a huge Mike Gianelli fan. I love his solo records. I love the stuff he's put out with Dissipate, and I really love uh, that record that he did with Bermuda. I thought that was fucking mind-blowing 
awesome album. I love Glass Cloud. Um, that last EP that they did was absolutely killer. I do love the nine string stuff, but there seems to be a profound lack of nine strings that have the features that I want down there. You know, I really want a multi scale nine string. I want something that has great clarity, a uh, fucking brutal tone, but mainly the multi scale thing. And before anyone mentions it, no, I don't want to buy one from that brand. But funny you should mention it because literally just last week, I pulled the trigger and I put a deposit down on a nine string from Maslow Guitars out of Argentina. They have a nine string run that they are doing right now. And, you know, what can I say? It caught my attention. And I thought that the price was really, really right for uh, all the things that are being offered. And a handful of people that I've talked to have suggested that they are honestly some of the best luthiers in Argentina. I said, hell with it, I'm throwing a deposit down and let's do it. So I've actually got a custom nine string on the way. Next question. What software do you use for guitar tones and virtual amps? So at this point, man, it's just neural DSP stuff. There's other amp sims out there, but I haven't yet had the chance to really throw down and check out a whole bunch of them. Hey guys, hit me up. I'm I'm down to try them. Honestly, I've had a good relationship with the Neural DSP guys and I've loved checking out every one of the Neural DSP plugins up to this point. Some more than others, but I will say every one of them has been absolutely stellar. That said though, that new Fortin Cali plugin is my new go-to for sure. Um, it's honestly something that I demo practically everything with now. Sometimes I blend it with something else. Like sometimes I'll blend it with the high watt or maybe the Marshall. Um, sometimes I'll even blend it with the archetype Nolly plugin because of that 5150 tone that it's got on there. That tone seems to just blend so nicely with the Fort and Cali plugin. I, I love that neural Fort and Cali plugin. It is absolutely killer and it's so versatile that that is probably my main uh, amp sim VST that I use these days. Why won't you drink any IPA? I've tried many IPAs. I've, I've really tried to get into IPAs. And I will even say that there's a handful of them that are kind of creeping up that I'm starting to get sort of kind of interested in. The juicy and the hazy stuff, for example, because it's got more of a citrusy, more of kind of a juicy flavor to it. Now, the stuff that's like, you know, the Imperial IPAs and the Double Imperials, you know, and the super bitter shit, that's the stuff that I really don't like. I don't like the hoppy bitterness, and that's why I don't care for it all that much. You know, there's also still a sort of like hipster thing of like, well, everyone else likes IPA, and that bothers me, but, you know, that goes back to something that I said during the first question. I don't have to like it, you don't have to like it, but if someone else likes it, who are we to gatekeep them from enjoying it? So if tons of people out there like IPAs, fine, that's fucking fantastic, enjoy your bitter beer, enjoy your hoppy bitterness, I'm going to be over here with my stouts, with my porters, with my barley wines, with my ales of many different types. And I'm going to be happy with that. For what it's worth, I really hope you're happy being a hophead. And now it's time for this week's Troll of the Week. And this Troll of the Week is extra special. Let's tune in and see what Pepsi Guzzler 86 has to say. The end of these videos is kind of weird. Watching a product review to be then punctuated by a fat person drinking beer. Your weight is at a point where you look effeminate. Put years back on your life and do the metal thing. Pump some iron and then drink. If you need any more proof, I know you can suck on your own titty. It's not too late. <laughs> oh my god. What do you think, guys? Should I, should I make an attempt? Okay, so 
you know, again, the weight thing, wow, low-hanging fruit there. You want to talk about uh, physical fitness, maybe you should try reaching for the higher stuff. Maybe get some ups, man. By the way, why are you talking to me about what I drink, what I ingest, and what my physical appearance is? Your screen name is Pepsi Guzzler, okay? So how much of that shit are you downing? But anyways, seriously... You really just decided to take time out of your day and type this shit out. How sad is that? How about instead of taking the time to write out this bullshit, how about instead, before you even get this far into a video, you go up to that little bar, that search bar that's up here on YouTube, and just type in any fucking thing else and go watch something else. But no, you decided, hey, I have to let the world know this opinion that I have. Wow. Just wow. So with that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Remember, click like, click subscribe. There's tons more metal guitar oriented content to come.